the Raja has been imposing taxes in Rintap's area and it created resentment amongst the locals. Rintap is one of the last Iban leaders not to accept James's control. Near this dire sense of autonomy and independence, he wouldn't kowtow to the Raja. There have been two previous expeditions made to crush Rantap, but to no avail. He had a, a small band of followers relative to the size of Sarawak. He wasn't a threat to Kuching or to government or the idea of government. He was a threat to the idea that government could protect you. If Rentap was raiding at will on Linga and Sabuyao or into Kuching, then government of course would fall. Now James has entrusted his nephew Charles to defeat Rentap and his men once and for all. Rentap perhaps had two dozen followers in this fort, Bukit Sadok, which was deemed impregnable by local people. And according to local warfare, it was probably pretty difficult to take. In October 1861, Charles and his army begin to make a move to Rentap's well-defended fortress on a mountain. This is the Battle of Mount Sadok. Deep in the jungles of Mount Sadok lies a fortress built by a brave Iban warrior and his men who have challenged the Sarawak Raja's authority for years. The conflict between the Iban warrior Rintap and the Raja has come to a boiling point in October 1861. The Raja's nephew Charles Brooke and hundreds of his army are deployed to Mount Sadok with heavy armor. Charles Brooke had a locally made howitzer by Chinese smiths, hauled by 500 of his followers, by Malays and Dayaks and Chinese, up the mountain, up Bukit Sadok. I think Sadok was most important because it was such a symbolic uh, event. The hauling of the cannon was epic in its nature. He's going to win this one by hook or by crook. On the fateful day, the two sides engage in a fierce battle. However, Rantaf's fort cannot withstand the intense attacks from the Raja's firepower. The Mount Sadok fort is hit by the cannon, and the walls eventually give way. But Rintap manages to escape before he can be captured by Charles's army. Charles later wrote about Rentap and his great respect for this formidable adversary. He made efforts in the early days to broker peace with Rentap. And Rentap, from his own perspective, didn't want to be a part of this state of Sarawak. And I think Charles Brooke respected Rentap and respected his worldview, but it was untenable in the context of the nation states. He needed to prove that he could protect his people in this nation state, and so he had to destroy Rentap's power. I would say that the Iban actually respect the Rajas. Probably they didn't really like what Raja did to Rentap, but that gave them that realization that, okay, we had a Raja whom we should respect because he managed to even overpower our chief warrior. With the threat of Rintap eliminated after the battle at Mount Sadok, Charles's uncle, Raja James Brooke, has grown old and resides mostly in England. He has handed over his rule of Sarawak to his two nephews, Charles Brooke and John Brooke, or commonly known as Brooke Brooke. Now, in the early 1860s, there was a trial of strength, and this happens in almost every dynasty in history, that the successor can never live up to the ideals of the person who is handing over to them. And so James Brooke wanted to do things the way he wanted to do things. 
He was the, the old man at this stage with the experience. And the Raja Muda, uh, Brook, Brook, we'll call him, um, wanted to do things differently. But from England, James would interfere, as old men often do. And eventually, Brook, Brook challenged him and said, I've taken over, I'm doing it my way. You've already handed over to me, essentially, and I have the support of the local people. <laughs> 